when you stay with the Johns long enough, you get to hear them say contradictory things. And John Cha had a good analogy for explaining that. He sees people going down a road. Some people are heading off to the left, so he says, go right, go right. He sees other people getting off the road toward the right, and he says, go left, go left. In other words, the words may be contradictory, but they have their purposes for bringing things into balance. And the question is learning to know when to use them. For example, the John Fu. He would say you have to be crazy about the meditation in order to do it well. Finding an opportunity to be with the breath in all activities of the day. Being obsessive about it, actually. But then there were other times you'd say, approach it as a game, something you do for fun. And both teachings are right. If you get obsessed to the point of being grim, okay, you need a little bit of leavening, something to lighten things up. But if you find yourself doing it in a desultory way, you've got to realize this is something you have to give your whole heart to. That's what the quality of ardency is all about. You do this with all your heart. That means, of course, all of your mind as well. When things aren't going well, you really have to figure out what's not going well. Why? And be willing to put a lot of time in and keep at it continually. And if you find the mind wandering off in places where it shouldn't go, you've got to keep in check. Think of that coward. If the cows get into the rice, there's going to be trouble. So you see them heading off to the rice field, you've got to keep them in check. The contemplation of the body is one of the good sticks for keeping the mind in check. You're sitting here with the body, and all of a sudden you start thinking about the body in the wrong way. And you have to have practice and remind yourself, well, no matter how beautiful the body is, or how attractive, or how interesting the narratives you can create around the body, that come from lust. What have you got there? And learn how to visualize all the different parts put out on the floor oozing all of the blood and whatever else would be in them, you'd have to run away. And you'd hear they're all in the body, sew it up with the skin. The skin itself is not all that pretty. If you took a pile of skin, nobody would want it. And when it's all sewed up together, it's okay. And you can actually start fantasizing about it. So keep reminding yourself what you've actually got in there. Impress those images on your mind. And remind yourself of all the stupid things we do around the body and all the excuses we give, saying that the body forces us to do that. The idea that we need lust in order to be healthy. The body never made that idea up, it's the mind made up the idea. That's not really true. We get ourselves all suppressed, say, but we've learned how to do that at the same time by squeezing off the energies in different parts of the body. And that's what the problem is. If we learn how to be with the breath at the same time seeing the body as something that you don't want to really get involved with, you're perfectly fine. So it's good to have this kind of contemplation to remind yourself that when, the, when you start getting lazy and wandering off. Where are you really wandering to? What is there out there? And John Lee prefaces his instructions on breath meditation in his book on frames of reference, with lots of contemplations to give rise to a sense of sangwega. A sense of dismay over the various things that you might be tempted to get attracted to, or that would pull you away from the concentration. And even though some of these contemplations are not all that pleasant, and that would actually cause some painful contemplations, still they're good for you. And if you really take your well-being seriously, 
and you want with all your heart to put it into suffering, these are things you've got to do. Then you can settle down with the breath. Now you get to play. You can try long breathing, short breathing, fast breathing, slow breathing. Breathe into different parts of the body. Think of a part of the body that doesn't get much breath energy or doesn't get much attention, and give it a little attention tonight. And ask yourself this sensation you have of the body, that where you give it a particular shape. To what extent is that actually coming in from the sensations you're receiving from the various ends of the nerves? And to what extent is it part of the mind creating a picture and then trying to fit everything into the picture? When the breath gets comfortable, can you start taking that picture apart? After all, working for the body from within, what they call proprioception. But you notice the mind also has its pictures of the body as it fits into the world outside, and that more has to do with your visual imagination. And you can play with that. Imagine different ways of relating to the body. Sometimes you have a sensation and part of the mind says, well, that's a sensation in your chest. Particularly if it's a tightness, you might say, try switching it around. Imagine that that's actually coming from something in your back. How would that change the way you relate to that sensation of tightness? And as you notice, as things calm down in the body, the sense of the boundary of the body begins to disappear. In other words, there still may be that image in the mind, but your sense of the body as you feel from within is getting more and more calm, more and more calm. And the fact that you would have a sense of the body ending at a particular point comes from the movement of the energy. When the energy gets still, then things begin to dissolve into a mist. You can play with that idea for a while, play with that perception. A lot of the playing is not so much with the breath itself as it is with the perceptions around the breath. You will learn how to see that a lot of your perceptions are very arbitrary. They serve uses in some contexts, but not necessarily in others. And you can learn how to put them down when they're not serving a good purpose. And even before the breath settles down. Sometimes it's useful to think of the breath as not being confined just to the body. In other words, the body of breath energy is not just in the nerves or just inside the skin. It's like a dimension that extends outside the boundaries of your body. So it can nourish the body from all directions. That way you become open to good energies that would come in from a direction you might not otherwise have thought of, that might not have been on your list of things that were possible. But if you open up your mind to new ways of thinking about the body, there it is. So try to combine these qualities of being ardent in the practice, putting your whole heart into it, and having a sense of play. Think of yourself as being a, an expert sports person, expert athlete. Athletes play at games, after all, grown men throwing a ball around. Grown women throwing a ball around. It's tough for kids, really. But there's something about the games that they find intriguing, challenging. And they want to do it really well. So they're having fun at the same time that they're very serious about it. And the problem is with games like that, it's just that's what it is. People throwing a ball around doesn't really accomplish anything. All that time, all that energy could be much better devoted to the training of the mind. Well, here you are, training the mind. Try to bring those same qualities of being serious but being playful at the same time so that it doesn't get dry. 
that you have that lubricant not only of the sense of well-being and fullness that comes in the body, but also the lubricant that comes from learning how to use your ingenuity. When I first came into the States, people commented that the John Lee's teachings were not at all like the teachings you get, say, the different Vipassana techniques. The Vipassana techniques say, well, you do this, and you don't think about it, and you just do this, to follow the instructions. Whereas John Lee, along with all the other forest masters, would say, try this, try that. Use your ingenuity. Figure out what's going wrong, why the mind can't settle down, because your problems are going to be a little bit different from other people's problems. There's some basic general principles. This is why John Lee wrote down those seven steps in breath meditation, because they cover the main problems. But how they apply to you right now is something you can use your ingenuity to figure out. You give it a try, what's written in the book, and if it doesn't quite work, well, try something else. Try adjusting things a little bit. Except the meditation becomes your own, and it becomes your sport. Then you want to become a master sports person. <laughs>